Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have this synthesis for you. So, when it comes to our synthesis, the first thing that we are always going to do is the retrosynthetic analysis. And what I'm seeing right away is that part of our original molecule, we can see it right over here in our product, which means that the only important bond that we are going to be making here is right over there. That's going to be our new carbon-carbon bond. So we'll need to figure out how to add this whole part to our molecule. Now, of course, if that was just that easy, I probably wouldn't be making this video. So let's look at our final product and try to think how we can assemble that part of our molecule. And the first thing that I'm going to see here is what type of functional groups we have. And of course, the functional group that I have in my molecule over here, that is a primary amine. And since primary amines are not really compatible with pretty much any carbon-carbon uh, bond making method that we know so far, we are probably going to be putting that primary amine at the end of our synthesis when my main carbon-carbon bond over here is already in place. So let's think how we can make this primary amine. One method that comes to mind is the use of the primary alkyl halide and adding my nitrogen there via the Gabriel synthesis classic, but a little bit cumbersome, so probably not the best way. Another synthesis of primary amines can be accomplished with something like reductive amination. So if I had an aldehyde at my primary carbon, then by using ammonia uh, with a reducing agent like sodium borohydride or something of that sort, I could potentially make my primary amine. Nice, clean, easy. The only problem that I'm going to have here is, well, how exactly I'm going to make my aldehyde here. Synthesis of aldehydes is not necessarily the easiest thing either, so so maybe I should brainstorm a little bit more. And talking of reductions, there is another simple reduction technique that we can use, is the reduction of a nitrile. So if we have a nitrile at the end of our molecule, we can easily reduce that, making our primary amine. And the cool part here is that we can easily add that nitrile via a simple substitution reaction. Meaning that my predecessor here is going to be some sort of a living group. I'm going to represent that with an X over here and the corresponding cyanide as a nucleophile, which can easily replace that X and give me my desired nitrile. Now, adding a two carbon fragment where I have one, two, and some sort of a living group or a functional group at the end of that chain at the carbon number two immediately rings the bell of the epoxide reaction, which means that I can create this bond over here via the reaction of organometallic compound and an epoxide, giving me my predecessors looking like that, which can be easily synthesized from my starting material. So now, when I have the outline of the entire synthesis with all the steps and the key intermediates and key reactions, I can put it all together into one synthetic scheme and show the entire synthesis from the beginning to the end. The first step here is going to be a simple electrophilic aromatic substitution, the simple halogenation reaction, and since the OCH3 group that we already have sitting on our molecule, that is an orta director, we are not going to have any troubles putting bromine into the position, because in reactions like that, the substitution into the para position is usually the predominant process, so that's going to give us the major product. Next, we are going to convert our bromide into the corresponding Grignard reagent. Typically, that reaction is done with magnesium shavings in THF or other ether-like solvents to stabilize the intermediate. And once we have our Grignard reagent here, we can do the reaction with an epoxide, which after the acidic aqueous workup going to give us the primary alcohol. Now, we have the OH over here, and we wanted to have a living group, and we know that OH is not a particularly good living group, so we'll need to convert that OH into a good living group. There are multiple different ways how we can do it. I will choose the tosylation. This way, my OH now becomes a tosylate, which is an excellent living group, and I can easily replace it with the cyanide in a simple SN2 reaction. So, as my nucleophile, I'm going to use potassium cyanide, I will also use an appropriate acetonitrile solvent here, which is the uh, typical polar aprotic solvent which we find in SN2 reactions, and that's going to give me my nitrile. So now we are ready for our last step, which is going to be the reduction of our nitrile to give us our final product. And in order to do my reduction, I'm going to use lithium aluminum hydride, which is going to give me a negatively charged nitrogen, so I would have to do the acidic workup, but since the primary amine that 
we are forming here is a base, we are also going to end up doing a basic workup after that. So these types of reactions, whenever you are going to be making your amines, they actually have two workup steps because you will have to neutralize your amine due to its acid-base properties. And there we have it. So what do you think about this synthesis? Did you come up with any alternative ways? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Your likes and comments really help in promoting these videos and help more students see them. Subscribe to the channel for more organic chemistry updates and tutorials. Watch this video next and I'll see you next time.